David Smith here with another Flipped Classroom Math video. A few tips before we start. Remember that you can speed up or slow down the playback if that helps you follow along. You can also pause the video at any point to catch up with your notes or to try the problems before I explain. Lastly, you can turn on the captions and follow along with my words on the bottom of your screen. Today's topic Transformations of trigonometric functions. So I'd like to do a little review of trig functions before we start transforming them. I put a graph up here of y equals sine x. So x is the x-axis, whatever value you put in for x, and then y is the value that sine x does to the x and transforms it into the value that we plot on our graph. So you can see from here that the graph fluctuates between positive one and negative one. And then on my horizontal axis, I'm using radians, not degrees. So you're going to have to review your radians if you're rusty there. A circle has two pi radians. So in a trigonometric function, that means we go one full cycle. We're at zero. We rise, hit the max, pass through zero, fall, hit the minimum, back up to zero. That's one full period of the function. And that's two pi radians. So we divide that into four to get our, quarter, um, our quarters of our period. So the maximum happens here at pi over two, then one pi, we're passing through zero again, and then three pi over two, we hit the minimum, and then we're back at two pi. And then we keep on going by increments of one half pi. So you might need to review your radian measure because that's what we're using in this section here. Okay, so we talked about the period. That's the distance on the x-axis that it takes the function to do one complete cycle. So we counted it off from here to here. I've also marked it on the graph from this maximum all the way through to that maximum. The truth is you can measure the period anywhere on the function. As long as you're measuring a complete cycle, you should have the same value. The amplitude, that's how far up or how far down the function goes from the principal axis. So in this case, the amplitude, which I've marked right there, is this distance from the zero line to the, to the top, to the peak of the function. That's the amplitude. I did mention principal axis. In this case, the principal axis is our x-axis, and that's the line about which the function varies equally up and down. So this amplitude needs to be the same as this one, and indeed it is the way I've drawn that. So that is your period. Let's see, what else do I want to talk about here? You should know this graph really well. When we, when we were transforming um, quadratic functions, you had to know y equals x squared really well because basically any transform of that function is a change of that. So when we're going to graph sine and we're going to transform this a lot, it's, it's based on this function. So a good tip would be able to generate this diagram. If you can make that diagram from your brain, then that tells me that you do understand how this function works. Now, a word about cosine. Cosine is identical to this function except for one thing. Now, if you remember your trig functions, you might know that one thing. So think about that real hard, maybe pause the video. Okay, let's see how you did. Cosine just starts at one, does the same exact thing. So y equals cosine x would start here, drop down, have a minimum, drop up, and so on. So it's, it's pretty much the same graph, just translated a little bit that way, okay? Okay, let's take a look at some equation modifiers. Okay, so there's a fair amount going on here. I'm gonna go over this, uh, talk to you about all the different things that happen, and then we'll jump into Desmos and we'll take a peek at how that actually changes our graph around. So here we have, basically this is y equals sine x, y equals sine x but I've got four modifiers on here, so let's take a look at what they do. The first two are dilators. A increases or decreases the amplitude. So remember, that's how high or how low the valleys are. So that's gonna stretch it vertically. So that's a vertical dilation. The B increases the period or decreases the period. So that's gonna stretch it out a little bit. It's gonna have bigger gaps between the peaks and the valleys. So that's a horizontal dilation. So dilations happen in two places with our A and our B. Then we have horizontal translation. That's this one. This is just going to move it back and forth without changing its shape. And then this is the, the vertical translation. This is going to move it up and down without changing its shape. Okay? 
Okay, uh, before we jump into Desmos, I wanna encourage you to go ahead and pull up Desmos and perhaps you wanna experiment in advance. It's pretty straightforward. Um, of course, I'm gonna do that here, so uh, let's do that. Okay, here we are in Desmos and I've got Y equals sine X uh, put up there already. That's that same graph you just saw on the board. So let's play around with the two dilation uh, modifiers. Let's do Y equals three sine X and check that out. That was an amplitude modifier. And you can see from the graph right here, our amplitude is just one and now it's going up two or up to three. So we increased our amplitude to three. Let's try to decrease the amplitude. Take a sec to think, what would I add to do that? Okay, if you thought some fraction was what was required, you are correct. I'm gonna type one slash two. Now in Desmos, I need to hit my right arrow key to get a little bit away from that half, and then I can put in my sine X and check it out. The new purple graph has an amplitude of exactly one half of the, the standard reference function. Okay, so let's, uh, I'm gonna pop these out. And let's do another dilation. This time, let's do it as a multiplier on the x. So y equals sine of 2x. What happens here? Check that out. So what we did is by multiplying x, we decreased our period. So we, we basically cut it in half. Um, you can see that the function now goes through two whole cycles in the time it takes the standard reference function to just go through one. Let's just put in one more, uh, let's see what we can do with that uh, period. How about 10x? Whoa, check it out, it's a coiled spring. So we've decreased the uh, period by a factor of 10. And if you wanted to count all the peaks it takes to get from here to here where our standard reference function is, I think you'll find that those are 10. Okay, so we did the two dilations. We did a vertical and we did a horizontal dilation. Let's get in and take a look at the translations. Let's try y equals sine, and I'm gonna go ahead and use my parentheses just to make sure I do this correct, x minus three. Now this might be a little bit hard to see, but we can work it out. Okay, so it's translated our function, the black one, three units to the right. So what was used to be uh, starting at zero, now the function starts right here at three and does its first peak at five, and so on. So we've translated that to the right. Let's go translate to the left. Y equals sine X plus one. And now that one, uh, our blue one is one to the right. So instead of starting at zero, like our red reference function starts, it's starting at negative one. Now a word about these. It's a little hard to notice what the translations are because these functions just keep repeating. When we translate a figure or a point, it's super obvious because that point has just simply moved. But since this is a repeating function, sometimes the graphs can get a little bit confusing. You'll just have to get your wings for figuring that out. Okay, let's do a vertical. Y equals sine x space plus three. Now notice how I didn't use my parentheses because otherwise I would have done um, a horizontal translation and check it out. I've just moved this function up three units. So it used to start at zero, now it's starting at three. And notice how it's, it's not translated left or right because my peak is still happening right here at, uh, at pi over two radians, right about there. Okay, let's, uh, let's do it the other way y equals sine x minus two and check it out. Now we've dropped it down this second red one. I'm not sure why Desmos does this. They've got a lot of colors they could use. Um, but our second red one is our uh, horizontal translation two units down the y axis. Okay, so that pretty much covers the translations I put on the board. But as I'm working through this, I realized there's some reflections we can do. And our textbook doesn't really go into that, but I know some of the exercises do, so you should be ready to see this. So I'm gonna give you a task. Can you reflect this around the X axis? Take a moment to think about how you might do it. I know two ways. Okay, let's take a peek. The first way is Y equals negative sine X and check it out. It's kind of weird, 
we've reflected it across the x-axis. So we haven't translated horizontally or vertically. So it still starts at this point zero, zero. But instead of going up to the first peak, it goes down to the first minimum. Okay, so otherwise it's the same function. It's just been reflected around the x-axis. All right, so there's another way to do this. See if you can figure it out. Okay, if you thought about doing it like this, you are right. Put the negative on the x inside uh, I think I need parentheses here. Let's try that. There we go. Okay, so now I've got sine equals um, or y equals the sine of negative x and indeed it's done the same result. So here's a question for you. If I tap a negative right here in front of sine, what do you think is going to happen? Double negative. So we have done two reflections across the x-axis which takes us right back to where we started. Now that you've finished watching the video, take a moment to jot down any questions you have so you can bring them to our next class and get some help. You can also watch the video again to perfect your understanding. If you enjoyed it, please click the like button down below. And if you'd like to help me grow my YouTube channel, please click subscribe.